All right, so it has been raining pretty much all day and all day yesterday and the day before, which means that the garden is super wet. All right, so I will go ahead and do the video from over here in the covered area. Um, I'm really excited for this video specifically, yes, because I want to show you guys everything in my seed box, um, which I've had forever now, um, and it has all the seeds that I love growing um, and things that I'm you know, not growing currently but will be growing in the future. Um, but also because today I'm announcing the winner of the giveaway. So last week I did a video for my seed haul, which um, is everything I'm gonna be growing out for this season, um, spring 2022, and I announced that I will be giving away eight seed packets, um, six of which I bought and two of which are from my own garden. So I will go ahead and announce that the winner of the giveaway um, for the eight seed packets is Hannah Grace. Um, I will leave it right here on the screen somewhere. Uh, Hannah, please go ahead and message me on Instagram. You can find me at mini.urban.farm on Instagram. Um, DM me, private message me so that I can go ahead and send you your seeds. If you are new to this channel, my name is Veronica. Um, this is a gardening and homesteading channel, Mini Urban Farm. We have a blog also, miniurbanfarm.com, and the Instagram, mini.urban.farm. Um, I have been gardening for at least 10 or 15 years now. I started when I was a kid, um, on and off. So I have quite a few seeds, and over the years, I have definitely been um, narrowing down you know, the seeds that I choose and why I choose them. So I'm gonna go through them really quick because there are tons of seeds in here. Here. Um, but all of the varieties if you see something you like feel free to leave a comment and I will try to you know give you whatever information you're looking for today is going to be everything that is in my seed box minus what I'm growing this season um, I just did a full video of my seed haul for 2022 spring um, I will leave that video in the description below also um, but this is everything like historically all my seeds that I've saved everything I'm not growing this season either because it's gonna be too warm um, or I just don't have enough space um, just things that I have collected over the past couple years things that I want to keep because I really like them um, and I plan on using them at some point in the future so yeah here we go so we're gonna start with my favorite thing to grow um, if I can find them underneath this, um, which are my tomatoes. So I have all my tomatoes in here, and I tend to stick to the same um, the same classes of tomatoes, right? I really like indeterminate tomatoes because I like to grow vertically, and I really like Roma tomatoes for paste, but I always have at least one or two types of cherry tomatoes. Um, I have my paste tomato, so no matter what the variety is. Um, this season, I am growing Chadwick cherry tomatoes. They look like that. They are currently... Um, in the garden. They're just like an all-over round plump cherry tomato. They're supposed to be really sweet. Um, that is the variety right there from Baker Creek. Um, I have not gotten any tomatoes yet so far. I did start my garden um, a little bit late because we moved in with family and we actually didn't have a garden so we had to get it set up. Um, the next one here it's kind of cut off but you can see that's what it looks like are black cherry tomatoes. Now this is something that I actually grew um, last year and it grew really well. It did take a while for it to start producing but once it started producing we had tons of them. Um, this is not my favorite variety because they are very sweet and they they're they're called black cherry tomato but it's more of like a purplish bluish reddish kind of color. Um, I don't know if that's really the right color that I would say that they actually are. Um, some of them look like that but they were very sweet so it was good to, to eat them but I wouldn't like make it into food. I wouldn't cook with them. Um, other people in my family really like them, so I will probably be saving them um, for some point in the future. This is actually a tomato that I, I think somebody gave it to me. Um, I have never grown it, but I'm waiting until I have more space. Generally, I don't grow slicer tomatoes just because they're not my preference. Um, we don't really make like tomato sandwiches or things like that. Um, but I think it's so interesting. Berkeley tie-dye green, right? So at some point in time, probably in the dream house, when I have rows and rows to grow all the varieties of tomatoes that I want, I will probably be planting these out. Um, so yeah, that's something that I'm keeping. And then these are the pink bumblebee tomatoes. They are a variety of cherry tomatoes, also from Baker Creek. Um, and these are actually growing in my garden so far. These have taken a while to start producing as well, but like I said, um, I did not do a good job of starting my garden on time. So they're growing. They seem to not be really phased by the 
cold. It's been significantly colder here in the last couple of weeks. It's been like in the 40s or so. Um, and so, I mean, these, these seem to be doing really well so far. And they have tons of flowers and they're, they're forming really big clusters. So I'm really excited to see how these taste. And then my last variety of tomato here that I have um, in my seeds are my Roma tomatoes. These are just basic Roma tomatoes. Um, these are from Burpee, which I think grow really, really well. I mean, I have grown these for years and years, and generally they're pretty like blight resistant, pest resistant. I might in the future want to mix up like the type of paste tomato I'm using just because I've always used Romas. Um, but like I said, in the new garden where I have 3,000 square feet, then if I have more space then I can plant out my Romas and my Amish paste and all the other paste varieties that I want to try out as well. Oh and I actually forgot um, I have one tiny little seed packet in here. This is from a seed um, a seed swap that I was part of. It is a yellow tomato variety, Dr. Witchies I think is how you pronounce that and it's supposed to be like a big yellow tomato. Um, I am definitely interested in growing these. I've only had them for I think like six months or so um so hopefully the seeds will still be good when i get to the new garden um i will have so many rows of tomatoes i i don't even know what i'm gonna do with all these tomatoes all right so moving on to my salad greens and there is a ton of stuff in here i don't know if you can read that it just says salad greens on it but i have tons of stuff because i grow so many varieties of salad greens i grow um like a mix right but i i separate them out so i don't grow a mix variety um but I do it because I, I want it to have like that homegrown salad flavor. I don't want it to just be like, oh, we're eating straight arugula. Um, so I ha and some of these are actually repetitive because they're just extra seeds um, that the packet got wet or something. So my first one here is my Dazzling Blue Kale. I am growing this this season. This has been really prolific. It's been really good um, with pests in the sense that I haven't had any pests on it so far. Um, the last year I grew Russian Red Kale, I think it was called, also from Baker Creek, but it had a lot more well, I had pests, and it pretty much got destroyed by cutworms and aphids. So, so far this year, like, I haven't had any issues with with pests on my kale, um, and it's, it's doing really, really well. And it has a really good flavor, too. So that is my first salad green. Then I have Swiss chard um, from Burpee. Now, these ones, um, I originally had, like, a rainbow one. These, I think... I, it just says regular Swiss chard, but it's more of like a Vulcan Swiss chard. Like it has like the bright red on it. Um, I think this is actually, I think this is actually the same variety that I'm growing right now. Um, and they, they do really well. I've never really had an issue with them, even with pests. I mean, like the caterpillars love them, but it doesn't seem to be that affected by it. So these are just an overall standard good variety. Um, I have some spinach here. Um, this is a seed packet somebody gave me, I think for my birthday or something, or maybe for Christmas as a stocking stuffer. Um, I have never grown this. It's Giant Noble Spinach by American Seed. Um, I've never grown this just because we grow so many other types of salad greens that I do have to pick and choose. Um, eventually, I would like to grow salad. Uh, eventually, I would like to grow spinach. And I actually did try to grow spinach once before, but it was when I lived down in Miami, and I did not know at the time that spinach is a cold weather crop, so you can't really plant it out down there. Um, I also have corn salad, which I have two packets of this, actually. One from Burpee and one from Baker Creek, because I actually just misplaced the other one and I found it recently, so these are both the same thing. Um, I have never grown this. I had all intentions of growing this and then I ran out of space, um, but it's supposed to be really sweet um, and really cold hearty and quick, right? Like most salad greens. Um, I, I would like to grow this, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to grow this now because it's going to be in spring. Um, so I might have to wait until next fall or this fall coming up, right? 2022 fall, um, or maybe just in the future, but it's, it's at the top of my list to grow. Um, mustard, right? We have Japanese giant red mustard. This is a beautiful variety of mustard. I mean, and to be honest with you, it's the only variety of mustard I've ever grown. But if you see here, Baker Creek has this thing, free seed packets, right? So anytime you order anything from Baker Creek, um, they give you an extra seed packet. And the first couple times that I ordered from them, I got mustard seeds. And so at the time I had a lot more space. Um, I had 450 square feet in my previous garden. And yeah, I decided to plant out mustard and I loved it. So every single year now, um, and every single season, I actually buy mustard seed and sometimes I still get the, seed, the free seed packets of mustard, but they have a really, really good flavor. Um, I use them for a lot of soups and cooking um, and you can also like freeze it and you know just do a whole bunch of things with it. So I really like that and I put it in all my salads. 
Um, the next couple, actually the next three here, I had all intentions of growing this season and I got a little bit ambitious and I completely ran out of space um, because we already have tons of salad greens growing here, which are my Merlot bronze, oh my Merlot and bronze lettuce, which are these two right there. Um, the Merlot just because it has such a beautiful color and then also the spinach, which I didn't realize I already had a pack of spinach, um, but this is kind of like the same thing as the other one, um, the same applies. And then the lettuce that I was wanting to grow out, the majority of the reason I wanted to grow this out is because Ellen's daughter, um, when Ellen and I moved in together, she refused to eat any salad greens and she really liked lettuce. And so I was trying to be a little bit creative and sneak these in here. Um, now she's kind of come around to eating salad, so I don't have to like coerce her with these, but I would like to plant these out um, in the next garden maybe. Um, I might have to substitute something else if I still don't have the space. And then I have a few other random varieties here of lettuce, the same thing. Um, I have my stevia lettuce, which I've, or Sylvia, Sylvia lettuce, sorry. Um, but it's supposed to be like a rare lettuce variety. That At least that's what it says on the back um, from Burpee. And eventually I might just, <laughs> just stick these all together and plant them out together. And then I have um, some Pam Island cost lettuce from Baker Creek. Now I got this in a sweet a seed swap. Um, so I really don't know what this is supposed to look like. I don't think I've ever looked it up. Um, but that's one that... I'm not sure if I'll ever grow it. Um, I might have to wait and see what it looks like. And then, again, my free seed packets, I got some other salad greens. Um, I think they're like Asian greens, so eventually I might try these out, but it's always good to have like, you know, if you, if you run out of something or um, if you have more space or like a lot of the um, seed companies are having a lot of shortages right now, then at least I have something um, to cover just, you know, for the, the meantime. All right, so I'll do my root vegetables next and I kind of just keep them in this <laughs> giant bag thing that I have here. Um, so I always get really ambitious with root vegetables um, in the sense that I think I can grow them here. Um, and some of them do, right? But historically I have not had great success with root vegetables um, besides radishes and carrots. Um, last season or last year, I had a lot of success with carrots. Um, I have some carrots growing currently and it was really, really warm, um, and so now it's it's cooling off, but all of these things, right, root vegetables require um, a little bit of a cold climate, right? And so that's something that we have a little bit of here, but it's not like it gets super cold. Um, the first is Brussels sprouts, and these actually are absolutely beautiful. They are giant Brussels sprouts, and granted, I don't know how big Brussels sprout plants usually get, um, but these are beautiful. I will insert a clip here from when I did grow them in my previous garden. I'm not growing them here um, in my new garden just because they get so large and I actually didn't get that many Brussels sprouts, but we use the leaves, right? So apparently I found out you can use the Brussels sprout leaves and we had like a hundred on, on each plant, right? And so we just use the leaves for like, like lettuce wraps, right? But <laughs> Brussels sprout wraps and so we would like cook you know Chinese rice or chicken or whatever and kind of like wrap them you know using this like a burrito so that was really good um, and then these golden beets I wanted to grow and then I ran out of space and I was like no maybe, let me not um, just because the beets I've grown in the past my Detroit um, medium top I think is called um, from Burpee I don't know if you can see that it's not really focusing there you go um but these ones i got a few beets and they for some reason they just didn't do that well and i know people grow these a ton and they're supposed to be really good i could not get these to actually do well in my garden i've grown them twice now or i tried to grow them twice now um, i'm gonna have to do a little bit more research before trying beets which is why i kind of just decided to stay away from the beets for the time being um however my radishes always do really well. I do Pink Beauty radishes and then the French breakfast radish. These are both from Baker Creek. Um, I really like this variety and I just, I think this has like a, a milder flavor um, than the other ones that I've grown, but they grow really fast. So most varieties of radishes grow in under a month, right? Which is one of my favorite things about them because I love radishes um, and you don't have to wait for them, right? Because I am not a patient person at all. Um, then I have my little finger carrots, which I actually have in the garden so far. I have a few other varieties of carrots growing in the garden. Um, this is just the one that I had left over. So I'm not sure if I'll, I mean, it's just, it's supposed to be, I think, just like a basic carrot. Um, but 
we'll see if I like it and then I'll just keep buying them. Um, I have a red carrot and a purple carrot also in the garden right now and then I, I grew out a different orange carrot before um, so I just kind of decided to mix it up with these. And then I have also, oh I have more Pink Beauty radishes here. Um, these are from Baker Creek also but the label is different, I'm not really sure why and I can't seem to get that to focus either. Um, but this is just the Pink Beauty radish that I've grown several times already. Um, I like those as well. Um, they they don't like it if you're inconsistent with the watering and now um, it's been cold and rainy and before that it was hot and dry and they're kind of cracking a little bit. I mean it doesn't change the flavor but they're cracking. Um, so you know. And then I have kohlrabi which was a free seed packet and granted like I have ordered from Baker Creek now like tons and tons of times. Um, sometimes multiple times each season so you always get a free seed packet. Um, I've never grown this but I've, I've heard that it's really good. This is something experimental that I will try once I have more space. Okay so on to my squashes and squash is one of my favorite things to grow. Um, I don't have tons of experience in growing many varieties. There is one variety that I am going to be buying seeds for in the upcoming seasons because I want to be able to plant it out in the food forest, right? Um, if you're new to the channel, we have a 7,000 square foot food forest that is not on this property. It is on our new property that we bought. Um, our house is currently being built over there, but we've already started planting fruit trees and I would like to be able to grow um, seminal pumpkins and some butternut squash underneath the fruit trees. Um, so the first one that I have here is acorn squash and I actually seed saved these, I think, yeah, in 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, these, I don't know if they're focusing or not, but these are just my acorn squash seeds. Um, I think this was all from one acorn squash. I mean, you can see you get tons of seeds and I don't, I think I've only used a few of them. Um, so that's pretty much all of them. I have yellow squash that, these are my seeds from my own garden. You can see like I, I write on it, you know, spring 2021, I think it says. So these are things that I've grown the fruit and seed saved. Um, and then I have the original seeds from them. Um, so it's actually early prolific straight net squash. Um, I use these seeds to plant out and then I sa uh, seed save them <laughs> there. So that's the same variety. And then I have um, zucchini. So black beauty zucchini. This did really, really well from Baker Creek. Um, I, I always have a problem with, um, with blight and, um, oh, powdery mildew. I have a problem with powdery mildew on all of my um, zucchini plants and I'm not sure how to get rid of it. I've had a little bit of success trying different methods in the past, um, but I always managed to get tons of zucchini anyway. So, and then somebody gave this to me also. Um, this is just a summer squash, yellow variety summer squash. Um, oh, actually, and actually it's early yellow straight neck, which is the same variety <laughs> that I bought. And then next up is my butternut squash, which I've actually grown several times before. Um, this does need a, a bit of space, right? So I have tried it um, in a little bit more of a condensed setting and it doesn't do so well. And my, the first time I, I tried planting this out, um, it got, I, I did get a few pretty decent sized butternut squash, but it got um, powdery mildew as well. And then my neighbor actually had a garden or has has a garden but he let it like completely go to seed um, and so I planted this out in his garden um, when he was really excited about it and it did so well because his is an in-ground garden and this just like went wild and took off and there was butternut squash everywhere so I'm definitely gonna be planting that out again um, this is the same thing um, winter you know Waltham butternut squash it's I think pretty much the same variety as the other one um, and then I have green bush zucchini which I got in a um, a seed swap as well. Um, that's it for my squashes, but I would like to be able to plant out some seminal squash, right? Or seminal pumpkins. They do really well in Florida um, because they're native to Florida. Whenever you can plant out something that is native to the area, that's always a plus. Um, so definitely looking forward to getting those. Um, I've had a little bit of trouble finding them though. If you know anyone who has them or if you know where to find them, um, seminal pumpkin seeds let me know leave a comment <laughs> I would be very grateful and then on to my let's do beans next because I love growing beans it's something that I have been growing I have been growing beans since I was a kid actually um, I used to plant out bush beans in my my grandparents house in South Florida 
So the first variety I will share with you is my old homestead green beans. And this is something that I seed saved um, after I grew them. These are a pole bean and they had a good flavor, but I don't know that I would recommend them. Um, I, I have them here just because I like to hoard seeds, um, but I, I don't know that I would actually recommend them. Like if I can't find seeds or something through the seed shortage, then I will have them, but they are really stringy. Right, so I didn't realize that they were gonna be like that. Um, I planted them out, they're very prolific. Like I was harvesting beans three times a week for just from these. And I had, at the time, I think I had like 36 plants and they grow really fast, but they're really stringy and like no one really liked eating them. So I just kind of kept them. Um, Marvel of Venice pole beans, I will say this is a yellow wax, waxy variety of pole beans. Um, these do not grow nearly as fast and they are also stringy. I love yellow beans, which is, basically why I got them. Um, I have grown them several times now and they don't they don't do as well um, as other varieties I've planted. So I don't think I'll be planting those out in the future, but I have, I think like maybe 15 seeds in there um, just in case. And then I have my, and I should probably take the rest of these out too. Um, I have my um, blue lake bush beans. These are all the same. Um, mainly because I really like growing these. So this is what I have in my garden now. Um, I had the jade bush beans kind of like sprinkled in there, but I think the b jade bush beans and these ones, they kind of look the same to me. They taste exactly the same. They grow the same way. Um, I think one came up like two days ahead of the other one. Um, so I just have continued to grow these and I had these in my previous garden. They are a stringless variety of uh, of green beans, bush beans, and they're just really good tasting. They're a really good snap. Um, just everything about them, I really like them. So I have tons of them, so I never run out. And I think this season I planted out something like 20, um, 20 plants. And next season I will be planting out more of these because I want to be able to harvest more of them. And I will be increasing the number per square foot. Um, I have planted these out at nine per square foot. If you follow square foot gardening, um, nine per square foot does really well. It gives you a lot, but you have to kind of baby them a little bit more um, just because they're like more crowded together. And then these are my snow peas. All right, which as the name implies, um, you kind of need colder weather for this. I did try to plant them out they did not actually grow. Like I got some of the green, like I got the vines and the greenery and all that. Um, and I even got some little flowers, right? Those pretty little pink purple flowers that you see there. Um, but I didn't actually get any peas because the weather warmed up um, much sooner than I was expecting. So that is pretty much all of my beans. And then on to, we'll do herbs next. All right, so we have herbs and then we have peppers and I have a miscellaneous folder. All right. Um, so as far as herbs go, um, I have like thyme and um, I have lemon thyme, I have rosemary, but I don't have those in seeds um, because those I usually propagate through the actual plant, like I take cuttings. Um, I don't tend to start them in seeds. You can start them in seeds though, and I am starting orange thyme um, and a few other varieties of like mint and stuff this season, um, which I've already covered in the other video, um, so I won't redo them, but these are all of my... Um, herbs. I have lemon basil here, which I seed save from my lemon basil plants. Um, so I have an entire video on how to seed save basil if this would focus here. <laughs> there you go. Um, so this, uh, this seed packet, you can see me seed saving and there's like 300 seeds in here. Um, but this has a really, really pretty fragrance, right? And it tastes very lemony. Um, the same thing with my, um, my lemon thyme. Um, but that one, I always just propagate out from my existing plant. So this is Thai basil. Um, I actually have grown this only once um, from Baker Creek. That is the name of it. It does do really well. Um, somehow I managed to kill it by over fertilizing it, um, but it grew really, really well um, up until that point. And some of it even survived after that. I actually never used it because after I grew it, I decided I didn't like the taste of this. Um, it tastes like licorice and it, that's not my favorite taste. Um, if you like licorice then, or um, anisette or anise, um, it tastes like that. So I don't really use this. Um, I have tons of them. You can hear there's like hundreds of, their, of them in there still, um, but I might actually grow these and sell them. Um, um, next up is parsley. This is just an Italian parsley. Um, it grows really, really large. And I've grown this really um, densely 
together and then I've grown it a little bit more scattered out um, if you grow it really densely it gets kind of leggy and it's like a bush of parsley and the leaves don't get as big but if you grow them just a tiny bit more scattered out um, you know they get bigger obviously and what I do with this in addition to just growing it in like a clump I actually plant out a couple of seeds and you don't even have to cover it or anything you just kind of like sprinkle it um, I plant out a couple of these underneath all my tomato plants and since I have been doing that I've noticed a lot less pests on my tomato plants maybe because the caterpillars or whatever it is start like climbing these and eating these instead or maybe they can't climb up that you know to get to the tomatoes I don't know what it is but I always plant out parsley underneath my tomato plants now um, I have some chamomile. Um, this is Zadi Zlotti Lan or Lane, I think. I'm not exactly sure how you say that. Um, but I tried growing that this season. It did not go well. It's still in my garden. Um, it. I actually don't know how long this takes to grow. Um, it probably says it somewhere here. But yeah, this this is kind of dying in my garden now. So I'll be ripping it up at some point in time. I would like to be able to grow chamomile for tea because I love chamomile tea. But it just does not like me right now. Um, I have some onions, right? These are just bunching onions, like green onions. Um, I do have these in my garden. I grow these every um, every season. Um, the way that I usually grow them is not through seed, though. I usually go to the supermarket. I go to the organic section. I get a bunch of onions, right? Like this type of green onions, and I just put them in the ground, and they grow. Um, you don't have to grow them from seed. The bunch of onions at the supermarket is like a dollar. So usually that's how I grow them, but I have grown them some, from seed in the past. I have chaya, I think is a chia, chaya. Um, I've never grown this. It's a superfood, it says on the back, and it is a microgreen. I got it because I was so intrigued um, by growing microgreens at one point in time. You can tell the whole packet is still there. Um, at some point in time, I would like to experiment with this, but for right now, I'm, it's just going to stay there. I'm not going to bother touching it. And then this is the same parsley that I have. This is the one that's growing in my garden right now. Um, just the Italian parsley. All right, and so for my peppers, um, I only have two types of peppers here um, because I don't do that well with growing peppers. <laughs> um, so basically that's, the, you know, I've tried it in the past. Um, it seems to have gotten better, but yeah, I, I haven't done that well with peppers in the past. Um, first off is my Lesia pepper. Um, which I grew and I got a few peppers out of them. They were actually really big, but they grew really slowly And I'm not sure if that's because I'm missing some fertilization or whatever um, They did look just like that. They were absolutely beautiful and they were pretty sweet um, So I really liked growing them and I think there's only like four or five seeds in here um, These were a little bit more on the expensive side because they're like only ten seeds So I would like to try and growing that more um, in the future just maybe if I have like an in-ground bed um, I think that would probably be better because um, I had some cayenne pepper seeds. All right, this is cayenne pepper. Um, I had some of these seeds and I actually planted them that um, in my neighbor's garden, that garden that is now like overrun. And so one of the things I noticed, right, is that I was back there one day talking to him and his entire garden was just covered in weeds, but there were little red cayenne peppers everywhere, right? Like hundreds of cayenne peppers um, off of just a few plants. And so I asked him if I could go ahead and seed save them. I really don't love spicy food um i none of my family actually eats spicy food but um it's really good for like fireside or if you have a cold or you know you're getting sick or whatever so i'll make a tea out of it these are very 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 hot um at least for me cayenne peppers are like super hot um and so i went ahead and seed saved these and i froze the the whole peppers um from the ones i didn't seed save so i have those for some point in the future when i have space to just grow extra stuff I'll probably just end up growing a few, you know, just to, to have on hand or give away or whatever it is. And then my last folder, or my last little baggie here is my miscellaneous baggie. Um, this is just kind of like where I keep anything that I only have one of, um, or anything that doesn't really fit into another category. Um, these are crops in their own, right? I just don't have like multiple of them. Um, so my corn, um, this is Montana, I think it's called Montana blue corn all right and it looks just like that it is absolutely gorgeous i actually have grown this um i grew this last year spring i believe it was it grows ridiculously fast um i did not get a good harvest off of them um but i enjoyed growing it so i think i didn't plant it at the right time um, i think it needs a little bit more warm weather than i then I planted it out at that time. Um, so I will be trying to grow this again. It is gorgeous. I didn't get to eat any of it, but I did use it as decor. Um, next up, I have orange 
okra, right? And I just, I put orange okra um, on the one that I seed saved. And this is actually also from that garden that was overrun with weeds. Um, but that is this variety of okra. It is Jing Orange Okra. This is actually on the cover of the Baker Creek Seed Catalog. I think it was last year. Um, this is absolutely gorgeous. It does turn green when you cook it, so it doesn't retain the color. Um, I was kind of sad about that, but it grows really, it grows really well, um, and it grows fast. the The flowers are absolutely beautiful. I'll try to find a picture and leave the flower picture here because that was really pretty. Um, and you're supposed to harvest them when they're like two or three inches tall, um, or like two or three inches long, the actual okra, because if not, it gets very, very woody, um, and it it really does feel like you're chomping on a piece of wood. So that's a consideration um, if you're planning on planting out okra. Um, I do have some cucamelons here. Um, I don't know if you can actually see my scribble scrabble on there, but these are cucamelons that I've saved um, that I've grown in the past. I really was excited to grow cucamelons. Um, they're Mexican soured gherkins. I think they're like the little tiny um, ones. They're called mouse melons also. And I was really excited to grow cucamelons um, for the longest time. I finally grew them. and. I wasn't as impressed as I thought it was going to be. Um, I, I like them. They grew really well, but they just, I don't know, I didn't get like that ability to use cucumbers because you can't really slice them. Um, they're tiny and so you just kind of like eat them one off and I don't know, it's, it wasn't my favorite thing. I have some Honey Rock Melon. Um, these are just seeds that I got in a seed swap at one point in time. So I might try to grow melon. Um, I don't currently grow melon, but maybe on the food forest area, I would try to grow um, some melon in the future. Um, little finger eggplants, um, which I have grown. Um, I actually have not eaten them though, because when I um, was growing these, we actually sold the house um, before I could harvest them. So they were growing, um, and then whoever bought the house, I'm sure, got to eat them. Um, but I would like to be able to eat them. Um, they do require a lot of space, and I did not stake them. I should have staked them. Um, and so in the future, maybe I will try to stake them. We have an entire trellis here now, so hopefully I'll be able to grow that. Um, the gourds, um, actually this is Lufa. So Lufa was another thing along those same lines. It was growing beautifully. It had tons of little yellow flowers, um, and I will leave like the, the video of it here. But we sold the house and along with it, of course, came the garden. So I didn't get to enjoy these. These take a long time to grow. And they were growing on the side of the house next to a window, um, which had a screen on it. And this was actually growing through the screen and up the side of the house, and it was just wild. So if you're gonna grow this, um, which I, I would encourage you to, if you're gonna grow this, make sure it has a lot of space away from other things that you don't want it to get on. And I have some safflower here, um, which I've never actually grown. I really wanted to, um, I just didn't. Um, and I think I was planning on putting this in a pot. I got it in a seed swap, um, but I would like to be able to grow saffron um, at some point in time. And this is kind of like a different version. It's not saffron, but it's, I think, supposed to be similar to saffron. All right, so <laughs> that is everything in my seed box. Um, when I go to plant some of these things out, I am going to maybe not expect as high of a germination rate because for the most part, these things have only been here for a year or so and seeds generally last two-ish years, maybe three years. Um, but after that, the germination rate, the germination rate um, does start to drop. Um, so if I'm going to be planting out these seeds, maybe, you know, have a backup as well. Now, the very first thing that I'm going to do when I have my new garden over on the property um, which still has to be built out. Um, it's going to be between 25 and 3, 2,500 and 3,000 square feet. First thing I'm going to do is go through and my inventory of all my seeds and decide what I'm going to grow. Um, I will probably be hard pressed to find something that I don't want to grow in here. All of these things, um, with the exception of like one or two, which I already mentioned, most of these things I really love and I want to continue growing them, which is why I have them in here. If you saw something that you, you know, you've never heard of or you've never grown or you wanted to grow, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Don't forget to leave that down below. Um, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.